This video is a short 10 minute review of muscle histology. It's not part of today's lecture on muscles. It's optional if you want it or not. And we're gonna start with this picture. I actually Google searched Venn diagram, muscle types. Look how much prettier it is than mine. So what you're going to have to do on the test is I'm gonna give you characteristics of cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and smooth muscle. And there's going to be, I believe, six choices. I'll be skeletal, cardiac, smooth, skeletal and cardiac, skeletal and smooth, smooth and cardiac, or all three of them. This would be a mean one, by the way, skeletal and smooth, the fibers are not branched. So, skeletal muscle is the only voluntary type. It has long parallel fibers, no junctions multinucleated peripheral nucleuses, fatigues quickly, contracts quickly, contracts strong. Now for cardiac muscle, it has striations as well. So they both have these banding patterns. So cardiac muscle has banding patterns, so does skeletal muscle. And they have sarcomeres. So they put Zetus. I wouldn't do that. I so wish I had this. I have so many good ideas now from this diagram, but your test is already written. It has short branched fibers. This has fistiform fibers, long parallel fibers, so that is unique. They have intercalated discs. I can't really, oh, there's an intercalated disc right there. See the intercalated discs? And they do not fatigue, and they have a good supply of mitochondria, so do skeletal muscles. For smooth muscle, small fistiform cells, they can be involuntary. They can be autorhythmic, just like cardiac muscle. They do not have striations, but they have the same actin myosin found in it. So, again, make characteristics. Make your own Venn diagram for my lecture. What are the shared characteristics of them? We then looked at skeletal muscle, and I just realized I steal a lot of his pictures from my lectures. So, we have vocabulary referring to the actual cell. So, we have the sarcolemma, which was the cell membrane. And there are these invaginations, that's the opening of one, called T-tubules, or transverse tubules. I put T-tubules. And they border the sarcoplasmic reticulum here, which stores calcium for contraction. Now, see this light, dark, light banding pattern. These are sarcomeres, the functional unit. And these have myofibrils, which are the contractile myosin and actin. And this is filled with sarcoplasm. So I'm going to have those vocabulary words. You have to tell me what they are. Now here's a motor neuron coming in. And this is actually what we're going to learn is called the telodendria of it. And it ends in a synapse. That's the gap between the neuron and the skeletal muscle cell. You're then going to have neurotransmitters that get released from vesicles here that cross two receptors that tell the muscle to contract. Now this one motor neuron is going to be actually attached to many muscle cells and that's called a motor unit. So this picture is showing the myofibrils, which are the repeated actin and myosin. So this dark band is the myosin, this lighter band is the actin. So myosin and actin. The actin, so this is a sarcomere, the actin is attached to the Z-disc right here. The myosin is attached to the M-line, which should be running down the middle. And this is the H zone that you only have myosin in. Now the A band, I did not make it the A band, I do not want it to be the A band, is from beginning of the actin, I mean the myosin, to the end of the myosin. Now the I band is where you have actin, see why even I got it confused after 25 years of this. So the I band is the beginning of the actin to the end of the actin. So there's only actin on the I band, there's only myosin on the H sub. And then the A band is from the beginning of the myosin to the other end of it. And when the muscle contracts, the myosin grabs the actin and pulls and it shortens. Now there's a chaperone molecule on the actin called tropomyosin. It's blocking myosin from grabbing the actin. Now there's another molecule called troponin that looks like Mickey Mouse that calcium will bind to. You'll move the tropomyosin and myosin can grab the actin and pull. 
And we also look at the connective tissue. Tissue. There's a funny bone right there, or it thinks it's funny. It's really not a funny bone. And we talked about a tendon. A tendon connects muscle to bone. Now, fascia is going to wrap an entire group of muscles. And we'll talk about the anterior and posterior compartment, the upper arm, in next week's lecture. But fascia is going to wrap an entire muscle group. So it could be the biceps brachii, the brachialis, the coracobrachialis. They're all wrapped by fascia in the anterior compartment. Now, a single muscle, let's call it the pectoralis major right here, is wrapped in epimyceum or epimysium, however you want to say it. That's pulling the whole muscle together. So we had chicken for dinner. I took my knife. I put a little line down the top of it. It flopped open because I cut the epimysium. The perimysium is surrounding bundles called fascicles of muscle fibers. And this gives blood vessels room to go through. Endomysium is going to wrap a single muscle fiber. There's our single muscle fiber being wrapped. So you see the fascicles coming out. We have a whole bunch of muscle fibers in it. And one comes out, it is wrapped. We also talked about the steps of muscle contraction. So a signal comes down the motor neuron, tells the neurotransmitters to be released. They go across the synapse, bind to the sarcolemma. This creates an electrical current. It goes across the plasma membrane, down the T-tubule, tells the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium. So the calcium is going to bind to this troponin molecule. Troponin moves tropomyosin, frees the binding site, and the myosin head can grab it and pull towards the M line. We talked about lever types. Students never think I'm going to ask it and half the class gets it wrong. I will ask you one of the three classes. I'll either ask if it's a mechanical advantage, disadvantage, or both, or I'll explain where everything is in relation. So class one is our teeter-totter. The fulcrum is between the load or resistance and the effort. It can be at a mechanical advantage or disadvantage. So this would be our class one lever. I just realized this is a worksheet where you have to match it. Our class two lever, you have the wheelbarrow right here. You have the fulcrum right there, the load in the middle, and the effort right there. I just moved a bunch of mulch in my yard. I use my wheelbarrow. So this is always at a mechanical advantage, and it's rare. Class three lever is always at a mechanical disadvantage, but you have higher mobility, higher higher exactness, is that right? more accuracy and control. So the effort is between the fulcrum and the load. It's always at a disadvantage. And I think most of our joints are actually this type of load. We also talked about the three types of muscle fibers. I actually have this picture in my physiology class, I think. Type 1 are slow twitch fibers. They are fatigue resistant. They have lots of mitochondria, lots of blood vessels. They contract slowly compared to the other two skeletal muscle fibers. They still are faster than cardiac and smooth muscle. And they don't really fatigue that well. The fast twitch glycolytic, that means they're splitting glucose, they don't have many blood vessels, so they're to white meat. That fatigues super easy, and it's the biggest, most powerful, and fastest contracting of the muscle fibers. It also fatigues the fastest. Then the 2A, the fast switch oxidative, are sometimes called intermediate. They have characteristics of both. Fibers are bigger than type 1, smaller than 2A. They contract stronger than this, weaker than this. Faster than this, weaker than this. They are relatively fatigue resistant. You've never seen me running 400. I'm fatigued after the first 200, but they're supposed to be like intermediate distance. So that is our 10 minute video. Make sure you just study the review guide. This is again, is a short review of where we did in our last lecture. And I will have a picture of the sarcomere on the test asking what the parts are as well. Thank you.